So we're going to do something a little bit fun and interesting today. Um, Petar famously won a competitive programming competition, didn't you? Oh, uh, yes, I did. Uh, I did win a few um, uh, bronze and silver medals at the ACM ICPC regionals, which uh, I guess wouldn't equate to winning a programming competition, but surely ranking reasonably high among uh, Northwestern Europe universities. Amazing. So I'm, I'm going to give you folks a problem to solve, and I'm not interested in the algorithm, I'm interested in the data structures that are used to get the best asymptotic. So we're going to build a cache, and you can imagine there's some cache class which has a get and a set method. The get method, I want to have constant asymptotics, and the set method needs to be as fast as possible, but we'll, we'll get to that. So the cache just stores a whole bunch of items. And um, I'll give you an example of what these items are. So we can have C equals new cache. And five means it's got a maximum number of five items. So this might be YouTube videos or something and the server will catch fire if there's more than a billion items. So we need to have a very efficient way of storing these items. And we can set some new items. So we can say C dot set. And we can say uh, key equals B. So this is the key, and that's a string. The value, now this can be anything, so I'll just kind of say it's, it's an object, doesn't really matter. And then um, priority equals five, and expiration, do you know how to? Just mute it already, which one? Oh yeah, cheers. And the expiration equals 10001. So this is an example of how we put something in the cache. So let's put some other values in. So we'll put um, uh, A, which should have gone first, but it doesn't matter. And it has a value of 5 and a priority of 1 and an expiration of that number. And then C, which has a value of um, three, a priority of five, and an expiration of one, oh, oh, one, and D, which has a value of two, a priority of nine, and an expiration of 500, and finally E, which has a value of one, a priority of five, and an expiration of one. Now, um, the only trick to this is when you set an item, if the cache is at capacity, we need to evict one of the items. And the eviction rule has two components. If the item has expired, so expired means that this number is greater than the system time, um, and the system time, let's say, is 900. Okay. Um, sorry, less than, less than the system time. Um, if it's expired, then you remove one of the expired items and you evict it. If there are no expired items, then of the least, of the lowest priority, you remove the least recently used. And least recently used is something that we're not yet tracking. Mm -hmm. So um, just as an example, if we needed to evict these things using the two rules that I've just said, so you can see clearly that this is expired. So using rule A, we would get rid of that. None of the other ones have expired. So then we say of the lowest priority, which is this guy, there's only one one, so we would get rid of that one. And then there's two fives, and then which is least recently used. Well, had we done C dot get, um, let's say C at the bottom, so had we gotten that one, then that would be the most recently used, so we would get rid of that one and then that one. So uh, which data structures would we use to do this? All right, very interesting, very interesting question. I would uh, just like to get some clarification on the second rule. So okay, so there is a rule to, if something has expired, that goes away first, and it doesn't matter which one we remove out of the expired ones. Like uh, there's no, you don't take into account priority and stuff like that, you just a random one. Right? Yeah, the two rules are completely yeah. independent of each other. 
and then if there's nothing which expired out of the still in cash things and you still need to evict, then you first hunt for the thing with the uh, lowest priority and evict that. And if there are multiple things with the lowest priority, then you choose the, the least recently used one. Correct. Just to make sure. Okay, so we have an algorithm uh, yeah. in there. Um, and I guess we don't care about the size of the keys if you want to get to the O of 1. Um, I mean, I yeah, I assume it's O of 1 by just, you know, fetching a reference, right? So that probably to me sounds like a hash table of sorts, right? Yeah, but is, isn't that like logarithmic in the size of the key? Or sure. Something? Yeah. Like th that's true, but yeah, I assume it abstracts away that because you know, it, like there's some complexity just in parsing the key that you give to it, right? So if you give it a huge key, right, it's gonna be there's gonna be some complexity just with reading it. So I guess the constant is like, assuming that these keys are constant space, then the whole thing is constant, right? Okay. Yeah. So let's see. So uh, the way I would approach this problem is like, I would try to think about enforcing the rules in order of priority. So there's gonna be potentially two levels to this data structure. One which is like mindful of uh, which things have expired and which ones have not to allow me to like quickly find something from the, from the expired file, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, so, so basically, uh, one thing that we could do is maintain some kind of collection of uh, expired things, right? And specifically in such a way that we can like, once we know something's expired, we can very quickly retrieve a random one, right? So to me, this sounds like, uh, you know, all, all you need really there is a, is a, is a list of some sort. Of things which have expired, and you can add stuff to that list as you discover new expired things. But you kind of keep track of that. But it doesn't have to I be have more complicated. Very secure, right? So can yeah, keep uh, it like. Yeah. So you don't the like that's why I asked him like for things which have expired priorities don't matter. You just take a random one. So like if I'm going to store things which have expired, it doesn't have to be anything special, right? Um, and the priority queue would mean you have like logarithmic cost to insert into it and take out of it, right? And, and what's the priority queue under the covers? Uh, well, I guess it depends on what you use, right? It can be a binary heap, Fibonacci heap, stuff like that, right? But uh, say if, if it's a binary heap priority queue, then it's a logarithmic complexity to insert and remove from it, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so yeah, I think a list would make the most sense for the, for the actual kind of storing the things which have expired. And then every time, I guess, get or set is called, well, okay, no, get has to be constant time, so we cannot do any funky stuff in get. But like every time set is called, we can run a sweep for uh, which things have expired so far if we don't have anything in the expired pile, if that makes sense, right? But keeping an expired pile would require you to keep arranging them and swapping them. Uh, right? But you don't need to arrange them, right? Like I keep mean, moving them. Isn't all we need to be able to grab the oldest one? Right. Uh, That's a saying of priority mm. queue. So if you only have access, like you don't actually need all the expired ones. You just need one. You just need the for each mm -hmm. set, right? You just need to pick one expired yeah, one. Exactly. So yes. you don't need a list of expired because you're not going to use only. Ah, only okay. Yeah. So actually, that 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 is a good idea, in the sense that we're probably going to incur some logarithmic cost anyway for the priority arrangements and stuff. So we might as well keep everything in a priority queue by age, uh, by, by expiration, because then, you know, removing something amounts to just popping the top of the heap, I guess, exactly. which is, fine. okay, so then I guess this is fine, yeah, so I but think we I all I don't know if it breaks the set. Hmm? I don't know if it breaks the set though, because when you put in, I guess you can just add it at whichever position. Yeah. Like the last position when you have set of, then it's all yeah. of them. Are we, is in general, is there not very many priorities? Like uh, this is sort of suggesting. Uh, I was like going to ask, but I, I think they can be arbitrary numbers, right? Yeah, arbitrary numbers. Yeah. 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 So, so, okay, so first component is a pro At least the scale to at least millions. Yeah. Okay. So we have a priority queue which is keyed by expiration. Because we don't care, and, and this can be, for example, a binary heap. 
So this now guarantees us that we can insert items into this heap logarithmically, and we can very cheaply look up uh, is the item at the top, which is by definition the oldest uh, item in terms of expiration, mm -hmm. uh, whether it satisfies the time constraint, right? So if the item at the top of the queue satisfies the time constraint, then you just do uh, pop on the heap and you, well, we need to talk about gets as well. I think for get, we need like a separate hash table effectively. And then whatever key is at the top of that heap, we need to remove it from the hash table, if that sort of makes sense, right? Because otherwise you're not gonna get constant time access. Like you need a hash table to get constant time gets, yeah. right? So maybe at point zero, which maybe we should have said first, but I kind of thought it was implied, like you need a hash table uh, for gets. So this is like something that maps, uh, just something simple that maps keys to values. Doesn't have to store any additional information because all the subsequent data structures will give us keys to remove if we need to remove them. One, one slight hint to give you yeah. is there will be another data structure for priorities. Yeah. And when you, move, when you remove a priority, you might also need to remove it out of the expiry um, heap. Right. And deleting something from the middle of the heap is linear time. Right, 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 right. Yes, that is true. So we'll get back to different, well, that might, that just means we might want to use a binary search tree instead of a binary heap, but right. we'll get to that. Like, yeah, <laughs> like this is something, you know, you iteratively refine it as you realize what the constraints are. But yes, yeah. that is, uh, we would have hopefully realized that. <laughs> um, or, or, you know, or if you, um, or if you know that your uh, keys will be embeddable uh, by all bit strings of a certain universe up to say n dimensional, you could use uh, web trees, which are log log n to both insert and remove. So you can do better than a binary search tree, but okay, wow. that's, that's advanced algorithms uh, material right there. Anyway, so hash tables will allow us to do constant time insertion, uh, manipulation, deletion of things that we actually do for gets. So get will only ever interact with this thing, right? So we have this, we said it's a priority queue. We said it's a binary heap for now. We know that might have to change, but uh, if we assume it's a binary heap, it gives us uh, uh, log n uh, for popping, right? And for insertion, which is what we need to do, right? Insert things, say expiration, and then pop the thing at the top if it's, uh, um, if it's less than the current system time. Uh, sorry, if it's bigger than the current system time. And then in that case, we then also just, well, whenever we decide to evict something, we just also remove it from the hash table, which is a, a constant additional kind of uh, cost on, on average. So we have covered successfully the case for, um, for expiration. Now we have to talk about priorities. And okay, so the first thing we need uh, like just, just one thing on that. Um, so we, we have a tree of expirations, yeah. but um, there could be collisions. Yes. There could be, uh, so there could be collisions, but uh, you can define a custom comparator for that, right? Like you can say uh, either expiration of A is less than expiration of B, in which case A is less than B, or uh, expiration of A is equal to expiration of B and the key of A is less than key of B. So basically you use the key to fall back to the keying function if the, if the expirations clash. So that's fine uh, in terms of organizing the data structure. Interesting, Yeah. okay. I mean, <laughs> you can build a heap like that. Like you just define what less than means uh, uh, based on this. Because uh, as we said, as you told us, we can use arbitrary elements to evict them if they're expired. So then it doesn't matter how we rearrange things which have expired. And how do you link the, um, the elements from the heap back to, presumably you're using a hash table keyed on, on the key here. Yeah, so, so this priority queue, as we said, it, it's keyed uh, by this tuple of exp expiration and key. So when we extract the min, it will tell us the expiration of that item as well as the key of that item. Yeah. So we can then use that key to evict from the hash table. Cool. Right. Sounds good. Yeah. So now we have to deal with the next thing, which is to arrange things by priority. And I think for that, the backbone can still be a priority queue of some kind, right? Which, we, which is keyed by priority. But why do you need a different priority queue? I don't yeah, because, different. because this one will just arrange by expiration. But you can yeah. use a composed, right? Like the key for the priority queue yeah. can be a, like a formula from expiration hmm. and priority as well, right? Right, so you could basically invent a custom comparison function which takes into account both of those things. Yes. Yeah, yeah, actually, you but could, yes. Like you could say like if 
expert no but i think the problem is that you want to give like infinite priority here for things that have expired and that kind of changes through time so you would have to kind of reorder the entire heap every time the system time changes which is like uh linear time so that's oh. probably but you can put when it was last accessed as an information, right? And then you can just compute this was the expiration at this time, and now I'm accessing mm -hmm. at this time, and I'm updating. In any case, like somehow the entire hard part, right, is like the last access, being able yeah. to update the last access yeah. fast. Right? I mean, I imagine what's going to happen is we're going to have some another priority queue for these priorities, and then they will index into some kind of circular list of things at a particular priority, but. We can figure that out as we go along, right? The, I'm kind of trying to kind of peel away this onion structure of constraints, right? So this one here deals with uh, the expiration. Now we can design one that deals just with priorities, assuming all priorities are different, and then we can deal with clashes and I, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of a nice uh, hierarchical way yeah, to yeah, approach yeah. this, right? So, so for this one, like you need to find the item with the highest priority. So this literally screams priority queue to me one more time, right? Yeah. With the, with the, the comparison function now bubbles up the highest priority items. Is that? Is that hmm? The lowest. The, the low, ah, okay, yeah, sure. Depends on, <laughs> yeah, in computer systems, I guess usually the lower priority is actually the higher priority, but yeah. But I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get to last access, right? Yeah, and that's no, no, no. But the problem is like this get, right? This this get now needs to change last access, right? Which means yeah. it can't do anything logarithmic. So yeah. like so that's that's gonna be the. There's gonna be an interesting hash table in here that will link uh, the key to where it lives in this priority queue, and and that's kind of gonna allow us to kind of pointwise update the least recently accessed item. Uh, and that's yeah. That, that's the, that's the dream. We will figure it out hopefully. Um, <laughs> okay. Right. So priority queue keyed by uh, priority. <laughs> Smiley face. Um, so once again, for now this is a binary key, but I imagine that as we end up having to delete things across things, this will have to become b a binary search tree or something. So this here is when we insert a new item. Uh, it gets inserted based on its priority, and currently we're assuming there's no two items with the same priority, so this just gets inserted, and we call extract min on this one if the top of this one hasn't expired, right? Uh, so uh, we have push and extract min if one uh, hasn't extracted. And now the, the hint which Tim mentioned surfaces because depending on which of these two queues you pop from, you need to delete from the other one, right? So that means you need to support an efficient delete operation, which for heaps are linear time. So we need binary search trees or better, I guess. Like a red-black tree or something. Yeah. I've, fun fact, I've never actually implemented a full red-black tree. <laughs> And, and how do they work in principle, just in, in a couple of sentences? Yeah, sure. I mean, so they're generally this idea of you want to keep uh, the tree balanced. So to sort of like, uh, so that the, the biggest path you take down the tree as you're searching for items doesn't grow uh, linearly with the size of the tree, but rather logarithmically. And to, do, to ensure that your binary search tree stays balanced under any possible order of insertions, you need to perform these kinds of rotations such that the tree balances itself. Because there are operations, these rotations, that take you from a tree to an equivalent tree, like one that is still a valid binary search tree which stores exactly the same information, but uh, in a way that now the diameter of this tree is smaller. So the path length you need to get to elite is less. And red-black trees deals with this analogy by coloring the vertices red and black, and then there's a variety of rules that red and black colors must satisfy. And I don't exactly remember all of them. I know like the leaves must be black, and then you cannot have a, a, a red note, cannot have both red children or something like that. I know you're currently supervising this stuff. Maybe you remember the rules. Uh, yeah. Soon. It's Soon. In, the, it's in the next Soon. part. But yeah, basically there's there red a, You can't have two consecutive yeah. red notes. Two consecutive red notes, yes, exactly. 
I remember that one. And the leaves all need to be black. Yeah, re leaves all need to be black. I remember that one too. Andrew, do you remember the red, black churro? No. Okay. So we have balance BST for both of these. And now we have log and delete as well. Although deletes are really tricky to implement in practice. Okay. And you can still have logarithmic uh, time to find the minimum in a binary search tree because you just go left, 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 left until you hit the smallest element. Okay. So now we have a solution for uh, everything except for the least recently used part. So we're, I think we're making progress. Um, so now, like, I mean, I had to do least recently used caches as an interview exercise a long time ago. So I sort of remember. But this queue now doesn't store just one item because there can be multiple items with the same priority. And what I, what I would say is, it should store a collection of items which have that priority. So now this push operation, right, it's not just, uh, it's first find if this item already exists in the binary search tree, if not, insert it uh, with a single element collection. If it doesn't exist, uh, sorry, if it does exist, add it to that collection and assign it the, the, um, the item that is most recently used kind of value. Does that, does that sort of make sense? So it's like we have our, well, ideally I should be coloring these nodes red and black, but whatever. <laughs> so there's a priority P1 and then there might be, since this is a well, it's a bad choice, priority two, priority one, priority zero. Okay, this should be priority two and this is priority three because it's in order and priority four. So each one of these nodes would now be pointing to some collection of uh, items, right? right? But there should definitely be a key in there, right? And there should be, so there's, there's some kind of tuple, I guess, which contains the key and contains the access time. Yeah. Right. And now because get needs to update this access time, we need to have, right? We need to have a direct link from this key, not just to the value, but to this entry over here, right? And this is, a, we can create a reference to this and assign it to this hash table over here. So that whenever get is called, you can kind of immediately update the access time of this guy using the system time. Does that, that sounds doable, right? And when you go across set, you can, change those references. Well, we, we need to be able to get the most, the, the least recently accessed, yeah. right? So how do we support logarithmic, what? O of log n pop, but O of one, like reinsert, like? So um, basically, uh, like I don't think that we need to physically store these access times because a, a list might be a sufficient representation of all the things we've accessed. Because <coughs> what does it mean to access something? You look it up, so okay, let's, let's rewrite uh, this yeah, to be yeah, more explicit, yeah. right? Like there's a, this is pointing to a tail of a list which keeps all the items, yeah. right? Yeah. So key, uh, key, yeah, key, okay. and then this key from a hash table points into that list, right? Yeah. So now when an item is accessed, what you do, you keep a pointer to the head of the list, you move, you splice it onto the top of the list, which is a constant time operation, right? You only need to rewire a constant number of pointers to do that. And then when you need to do least recently used, you just take the item which is at the bottom and that's it. Okay, what happens when you need to um, snip it in the middle? When you need to snip <coughs> it in the middle. So if you delete an expiry, you'll also need to delete it out of this guy. Right. You, you, you store the, the pointers, it right? Can be, these guys point now not just to values, but to pointers in this list. So you can just do a constant time list deletion and splice the pointers from it. It needs to be a doubly linked list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> so you need to know what's behind as well as what's forward. So this is, this is all sounding very good. So what's the asymptotics of our set? Mm -hmm. This should be log n. I'm thinking this is actually what, log n. Uh, okay, log n. Okay, so first of all, so here n is the overall number of items, for example. Here, well, like the number of 
Expiration. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. You need the expiration. Well, uh, no. Actually, as I said, we're kind of we can modify the comparison function to allow for clashes oh, yes, in the expiration. Right. Like that's that's not a problem. So this can be log n, where n is literally the number of items in the cache at any point, right? Okay. And uh, here, the all the list operations seem to be constant time, right? Like there's no yeah. real effort there. So, so it's this works because when we set something, it's never been used before, right? Backwards. Yes. Ex ex that, that's the yeah. trick, right? Yeah. You always put it at the head of the list when it's new, right? So, so the overall complexity is the complexity of traversing down. So it's log number of unique priorities, effectively. Yeah. Um, now, I will say, so this is the complexity of, of, our, of our structure. So log size of cache. But with the caveat that you could use a, I think you can use a web tree, which will decrease this to log log of number of uh, items. Wow. So I'm not completely sure, but as long as you have the constraint that the that your keys can be kind of expressed as bit strings from a particular universe, then you can do all the associative array operations in log log n time. And how would you amortize both of those traversals? Hmm. Uh, good question. So Ah, you mean as in like uh, these two traversals, or yeah? yeah. yeah. So. Well, as in the, the expiration and the priority. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, the thing is, it's tricky to do amortized analysis in this context, right? Because exp you can always give adversarial expirations that will force you to always pop here, whereas you might always do, you know, like different expirations that will always make you pop here, right? So it's like. If we're doing worst case analysis, uh, this guy here has more items in it, and therefore log of number of items in the cache dominates, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, although we could, yeah, I mean, if, if we want to kind of exploit the statistics of the data, we could also have like log of unique priorities, log of unique uh, expirations to like, but that's only if we expect there to be like a, fixed number of unique priorities. But but then we might want to do some, if we know there's a fixed number of unique priorities, then we don't need this complicated search tree. We can literally do like buckets, right? So priority one points to one list, priority two points to another list and so on. Right? So that then we could even go into constant time for, for, the, for that particular uh, part. I think there must be some amortization trick though for this kind of access like this. Yeah, I think this is more your area of expertise than mine, Andrew, the amortization part. Uh, is it? I mean, I, I certainly don't know off the top of my head. Like, b basically, if we're doing worst case, there's not much you can do because you can always force it to do all the work here or all the work here. That's like in terms of traversals. Um. Amazing. Well, um, I, Peter, I, I would have hired you. <laughs> good to know, good to know. The, the last time I've done LRU caches in an interview question was 2015, so it's been a oh, long yeah, time, yeah. long time since I last had to recall this. Yeah. And uh, would that be at Google by any chance? That was for Google, actually, yes. yes. Not, that, not that you're allowed to mention uh, the secret <laughs> squirrels interview question. Yeah. Cool. Well, um, that was amazing. Thank you so much, folks. Very enjoyable. Thank you. <laughs>